There you go guys, just doing a little gutter clean today on this uh, block of units. I thought I'd go over something to do with how we tie off on roofs because I found out recently when I sent a couple of new guys to do their work out heights course that it doesn't always get covered. Uh, when me and my original crew did it, we had a really good instructor it seems and he basically asked us what we do every day and then he went through mostly things that were specific to that. So uh, looking back now, I really appreciate that because he showed us all sorts of stuff that my two new guys weren't showing at the course and I've got to go over it with them individually, which I do anyway. So it's not the end of the world, but I figure if a lot of guys out there are doing the course on their own and you don't always think to ask the questions at the course, you just think about it afterwards, like, oh, what do I do now? So and I notice it's a question that gets asked a bit on the pages. So I thought I'd just go through how we tie off onto a tiled roof, because that's probably what you're going to be doing mostly. I mean, there are temporary anchor points for tin, which is pretty easy, but that's a different topic. So nine times out of ten, you're going to find sarking, which is good, uh, especially if you're pressure cleaning the roof. Uh, you can, well, you shouldn't be dodgy, but I know some people are, and you can tie off onto these. That is not advisable. It's only batten. It's not a very big piece of timber, and it's only just nailed into these beams. Um, every so often they're not really structural. This is what you want to be tying off to, but it's only made for sarking. So, first step to make life easier later is really clean it off good. Um, you need to tape this up after you cut it, otherwise it's going to be susceptible to water coming in, which you don't want uh, if you care about your customer, which I do. So that's nice and clean there. Take out a sharp blade, and we make a fairly big cut. Um, not everyone does it this way, probably maybe no one does this way, I don't know. I've seen normally people just cut along there and there. Um, I'll show you why I like it this way in a second. Let's put this down actually. So here's the hole I've cut, and the reason I've cut such a big hole is if you do just a little one, no matter what sling you're using, if you're moving around in sort of a 360 motion, you're going to be bumping into that and making it rough and, and possibly ripping it, um, especially on older sarking. This one's not too bad, but it's also not too young. But if you're doing an old roof, you can sometimes just poke your finger through the sarking. So if you're sort of hitting it with this as you're moving around, it's just going to make a, a rough circle and it's going to be harder to patch later. Um, as far as the slings go, I'm not sure if too many other people do this, but this is a two-ton lifting sling. The minimum standard is 15 kilonewtons, which is approximately 1,500 kilos. This, when it's in the choke position like this, it derates it to 1,600 kilos, so it still meets the minimum rating. But I much prefer these because they're inside a protective cover. So I'll show you the other slings that come from height safety places, um, and you'll see them, they're really thin webbing, and susceptible to sort of rubbing on roofs. Um, some people will probably argue the point, but you can use any rated sling. It doesn't have to be one specifically done for heights. So this one here is actually rated 2.6 ton. Uh, I'm using rough figures because this one's 26 kilonewton. Kilonewton is not exactly a ton. Um, but the minimum rating is uh, 15 kilonewton, so 1.5 ton-ish. Uh, this, when it is in the choke position, derates it to 1.6 ton. So you're still well and above the minimum standard, um, but I prefer this because you can see the difference. That's really thin. Um, it's going to get rubbed on tiles and it's more prone to abrasions, whereas this, the actual rated sling part that's doing all the work is inside this protective webbing, so it's going to last a lot longer. They're also dirt cheap. They're like six bucks or eight bucks, so I'll probably replace this one soon just to be safe. It's only a couple of years old, but it's a quarter of the price of these ones, which um, as you can imagine, they're just going to fray and uh, carry on with a bit of abuse, which I'm afraid they get on a tiled roof. So, I'll show you how you patch it later. Right, yeah, and here is how we patch up the cuts in the sarking. Um, use insulation tape. It's not cheap. I think it's around 30 bucks a roll, but you're not going to go through much. So, just do it properly. You're not going to have any issues if you use masking tape or duct tape or some rubbish like that. It's just not going to stick as good. Um, I can't do this while I'm holding the camera, so I'll show you the results in a second. There we go. Good as new. Never going to leak in a million years. Um, so yeah. Have a good one. Be safe.